Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. Sorry it's been so long since I did a, um, a video, but I've been a bit busy with bits and pieces like health and what have you. Um, first of all, I want to say thanks to everyone for your continued support. You know, I really appreciate it. But just watching videos and the time that takes that adds to what um what money I get from YouTube. Um, it's still only, you know, small amounts, you know, dollar a day, two dollars a day, that sort of thing. Um, but it all adds up. You know, it'll probably I'll get a payment in late May that I will use for fabric. I've also got um some money coming from other sources at the end of this month but it um it's actually got to go on something a bit more I won't say serious but a bit more urgent but for now I'll show you what I'm doing with this block for the quilt this block is number um, nine of row six which is a fish which is the purple I've used and the start of a shark's well a shark's nose so what I've got so far is the fish and most of the nose and if I lay this back down without disturbing everything it fits nicely in what I've got sitting on my mat that still has to be finished now this will probably make it a bit easier to explain to people these this what I've done so far I'll move that out of the way so I don't disturb it is basically I've gone around in circles which I'll show from the back so I started at the middle did a 6 then a 12 then an 18 then a 24 now with that 24 it ended up here at the bottom um, looking at it backwards and laying down bottom right hand corner the next row is not a complete circle it goes all the way around to the top right hand corner but doesn't come down this side there's nothing the actual pieces end at this this blue one so what that's done is 6 12 18 24 four complete circles you know as if you were doing a large large flower one round of 24 which goes all the way around but not down that final side because I've already done that bit and what that leaves me with is if I can move the mat enough it leaves me with the bottom and the top now these are all rounds and it's like the case of how do you make a circle or near circle into a rectangle which is what the block is and what that means is I will do this six and then one two three four five leave those four out of the way for now so doing twos that's easy you know you just back and forwards and you get them done then a straight row of that five I can get that done pretty much with one long length of thread then I've just got these four to add into that corner and that gives you the end of that block and for the other end once again I'll move the four out of the way and I've got five then you miss the middle one I've missed the middle one in both of these because that tall one that top one and the bottom one are actually already in place so I'm working on the four corners essentially so that's five then I'll come down same as this corner that corner is a six I can do that in one go then it just leaves me with these two lots of four and that's how you make a rectangle or a square or whatever shape you're doing out of what was 
basically a huge flower and this is still a huge flower but one side hasn't been added in so that's what I'm doing now so my next stage is to start here on the green and get that six done make sure I've got it all the right way round and not upside down so I'll work from that side across same as normally if I was doing a, a round so I start there which on this quilt is this well this block is this corner here this is actually block once this is done there's actually only 11 blocks left to do which is amazing seeing as the quilt is 130 blocks in total to get down to the only seven left to go is not unbelievable but it's a huge achievement the last two blocks like I said this is block nine block ten is the main body of the shark I don't think there's much else other than that in that block and block number eleven is the tail the tail of the shark and the side of the cliff. Each row is 13 blocks so blocks 12 and 13 have already been done they're just the cliff they were done yeah months ago. So once these are done that'll be row 6 done. I've done the first two of row 7 because I wanted to get the um, the final bit of the turquoise border out of the way so that bit's done I've got <coughs> yeah I mean I could rush and get it all done in the next two weeks but my site's not up to that and once I've got that done got all the blocks done there's the huge joining together of the top of row seven and the bottom of row eight which is which is well 130 hexagons across the row is so that's a you know that's a huge job to do so that'll be the last thing that's done I've got some money like I said some money that I will get at the end of the month it's my birthday at the end of the month as well my mum will send me a hundred dollars normally um, and I can get it it's called an education entry payment that's paid by the government I can apply for that on the 27th and originally that three hundred dollars was going to pay for the fabric for the binding which is this yellow that I'm doing my favorite color and the batting and the backing fabric and I just made a mistake I didn't need to have done that I need to actually come back down this this bit is um, that's force of habit just take it up to the top of the hexagon but I needed to have started at the bottom for these bits so that's it's not a huge mistake but it's um, a mistake all the less but at the moment I've got car registration due um, that's due next week um, I pay it quarterly so it's only you know, it's just under a hundred dollars because I get a concession um, and I've also got my driver's license to do so I've got those to be paid they're both driver's license I'm doing because that's your main form of identification the car registration I did that at the end of January and the car hasn't left the driveway since so that's uh well the car hasn't left the driveway since the first week in January with my because of my site issues but the um I'll still pay it and if the car ends up getting sold then I can get a refund but we'll just see see how it goes um part of me you know I look outside and I can see perfectly but then 
I was in the car with my friend the other week and we were coming down the highway and we pulled off you know, at this exit and I couldn't even see the slip road until unless I turned my head and I thought well that's a clear indication that I still can't see to the left um, everything being out of focus is still is still an issue you know sometimes the dizzy spells and things like that but we'll see I went at the end of what's the date on the calendar 27th of March to have the MRI and this is the booking that had been moved from middle of February because their machine broke down um, when it was rebooked I did tell them that I had surgery coming up and everything else they still booked it in we turned up at the hospital to have the MRI and the receptionist woman said nope can't do it because it's not been six weeks since surgery and although the metal in the hip replacement is not magnetic it can still be pulled out of alignment by the force of the MRI machine one technician said yep it can be done the other one said no and to be on the safe side they changed the booking to last week which is when I finally had it done uh, quite an interesting experience if you've never had one I was wondering if I'd feel claustrophobic going into the machine but they put they put you put earplugs in and then they put headphones over your ears and it's still quite loud in the machine but they put a thing over your head and you're looking into a mirror so you lying there and you can see your hands on your chest and if you look down you can see in the mirror you can see down to your feet but you can't actually see the the tunnel or the tube that you're in you have no idea that you're in this big tube it's just it's quite amazing the way that you know that that mirror blocks out you know any sense that you would have of claustrophobia or anything else i just shut my eyes and daydreamed and it went on it takes 17 minutes I asked beforehand so that's done I can view the images online which look quite interesting but I don't know what they mean I have a phone appointment tomorrow morning with the uh, or a specialist from the eye hospital who will tell me what those images mean if there's anything in there that will explain the cause of my it's called hemneopia um i'm hoping nothing shows up and it's just they can't explain it and just got to live with it so i can live with that it um does make studying difficult i do have a they call it a study access plan if you're disabled which they're classing this as and I get extra time for assignments, extra time in the exam, things like that. I've also had it modified so I don't have to sit the um, supervised exam. I didn't know that was an option when I first put down the things I'd need. Um, it's since been added, which means my exam that would normally be supervised, which is a right pain in the backside, because you have somebody take control of your computer they can see everything you're doing you've got to show them your desk round under your desk your walls everything else which is crazy if it's an open book exam which all of mine are that have been supervised that you know they make you cover your wall planner things like that you know an open book exam means you should be able to have anything you want on your desk you know whether it's related to the subject or not you know you just can't have somebody sitting next to you saying well this is what the answer is and you can't access you know um lecture slides or um recorded lectures so i now don't have to have that supervised exam i can just do it as a take-home exam it's still timed but none of that pressure of the person there also you normally only get a five minute break and if you leave your computer they will stop the you know, without permission, they will stop your exam there and then. So now I can get up and down however many times I want to, go and make a cuppa, you know, 
as long as it's all within the get the exam done within the time then that's fine so that's much better studies I was going to stop them but I'm going to carry on because it's just too much trouble you know the alternative as far as getting the benefits that I get unless I apply for disability which I don't think that I'd get anyhow unless my sight got a lot worse so studying's going I've got an assignment to write today which is why this video is going out early um, so we'll just see how I go I've sorted out what subjects for the whole rest of the year but I need to pass them which means putting in a bit more effort than I have been doing and a bit less quilting so just looking at the next thing on my list the next thing is my cat now I'm doing this block here I, I sew the blocks here at my desk so I can watch things listen to things do whatever while I'm sewing the blocks but when I go to add the blocks to the rest of the quilt I do that in the other room I've currently got halfway through adding in a block which is the final one I need to add in for row five and then I've got another two for row six and this will be the third one that will be needed to be added in but I'm not in the other room adding that in because if I do that the cat's going to want to come in and come up on the table and be next to me and at the moment that's that's too much for her she can't get comfortable I've got the horrible task on today Sunday on Tuesday of actually having her put down it's been a, a hard decision it um she weighs as I've said before she weighs next to nothing she's eating so little it's amazing this used to be a five kilo cat she's now down to the weigher on Tuesday but I'm guessing she'll be less than a kilo she's got the huge side which is probably the size of half a golf ball maybe a little bit bigger I mean it's a hard lump and they said just keep an eye on it but what it's actually doing now is it's affecting her balance because she's got no body weight you know and she's her movements you know she's stumbling a bit you know and she goes in the litter but she won't squat she'll just stand which means it tends to go over the edge which you know isn't a problem but obviously it's not right but the eight the lack of eating is more a concern if I pick her up you know, if I'd gone into the other room and she'd come in I'd pick her up and put her up on the table but if I pick her up she cries you know the rest of the time she'll cry just to be a pest or because she wants food or whatever but um not crying like she used to this is a sometimes a not in pain cry but a not happy cry so unfortunately I think the time has come she's 16 so I've made the appointment I mean I can cancel it but I think to be honest that'd be more for my benefit than hers and you know I've always said I won't have an animal suffer you know where you see things like dogs with you know training wheels on them and you know that sort of thing the harnesses and all the rest of it you know it all comes down to quality of life and I sort of think if a dog can't run around on its own four legs or even three legs then that's not fair to the animal but that's that's just my opinion the fact that this cat is you know if she was eating a load of food like she used to she used to eat so much it was um you know she was a walking you know garbage disposal and now she's barely eating a teaspoon of food a day so I, unfortunately the time has come and um yeah it is sad but 16 years this is the last one she's the last one and no more pets after this i'll just stop this for a sec because it's going to go run out of so yeah that's it you know I'm looking at I've applied for council housing social housing um, which would only mean a one bedroom unit they wouldn't give you two bedrooms unless you actually had to have a carer which I'm not at that stage 
all the paperwork's in, the, my doctor's done another big form that they required and all the rest of it. You know, I had to do a form saying why my current housing wasn't suitable, which is the main reason is no grab rails or things like that, and it's got a shower over the bath, which is not the best thing. You know, I should have waited four weeks after the surgery before attempting to use that, but I lasted two weeks, purely because I've done so well. The surgery's, um, you know, that leg, no problems whatsoever. There was no pain basically within a week. There's a slight bit of discomfort because there's still some stitches there. Um, but it's, you would never call it pain. But with the pain gone from my left hip, it means that what I thought was just compensatory pain on my right hip, yeah, from obviously compensating. Um, I've had my right hip x-rayed and it needs replacing as well, which I'm not worried about. If someone had said you've got to have your other knee done, then that is a lot worse. But to have the other hip done, yeah, that's a piece of cake. Yeah, I was... Off the, big, off the strong painkillers within two days of coming home. Um, I still take the slow release, not so strong ones, twice a day. I've got a referral to see the surgeon for my right hip. The appointment's in August, which is par for the course. You have four months to see him. I'm actually seeing him in a couple of weeks as the post-operative appointment from from him doing my hip and I will mention that I do have an appointment for August but I can walk you know I can't say I can walk long distances but going out to my letterbox and putting the bins out I don't even think about it now whereas before that was you know if I can leave the bin till the following week then I do it because it just say going out um, you know, my, my right hip isn't good, so any pain I have now is my right hip, and the, it's starting to be the, the things that I couldn't do because of my left, but it's going to get done, I assume the surgeon will say it needs doing by August, um, it'll get done hopefully this year, and then I'm just stuck with my lower back problems. So we'll see how that goes. I'll let you know what he says about my repaired one. I did have I did have it um with the x-rays. I've actually got copies of the x-rays and I'll act, and I'll put a I'll stop the video here and I'll put in a, the photo of it that there's a line across the bottom because I put the x-ray in front of the monitor to be able to get a photo to show it to um to my friend but the actual insert is amazing, so I'll stop now so I can put that photo in. So it is pretty impressive, the, you know, the thing they put in. I'm guessing it's about this long, you know, a foot long. I don't know. I, I don't, I've never seen one outside the body. And obviously I've only seen mine on the x-ray, but I do think it's quite impressive. So... That's the main things, results from the MRI tomorrow. So when I do the next video, I'll mention that also in the May sew and chat. By which point I should have actually almost finished this quilt. I'm going to take, take a break even once I get the... I've got some wool coming because I've got an idea for another blanket. Not that I've finished the one I'm currently knitting. But... Um, I'm going to get some more wool from online from the um, place called Spotlight in Australia. It's all homewares and you know, curtains and wool and fabrics and all the rest of it. It's where I don't like getting quilting fabric from. But I'm going to do the binding for this quilt rather than use this yellow, which I love. I'm actually got going to order some gold-coloured homespun. And just you make the binding out of that to save money. The backing fabric has to come from the expensive shop. You can get 
like double width homespun which is 2.5 meters I measured this quilt going by what's completed so I can get all the measurements um, well, I measured half yeah folded it in half because um, I haven't yet got tables laid out to be able to do it full width but basically it's 2.54 meters so we're talking less than two inches too wide to be able to use that wide homespun so the shop the expensive shop does backing fabric that's 2.8 they do stuff that's 2.4 meters and 2.8 as this quilt is 2.54 I have to go for the 2.8 meter fabric and I think that's probably about $40 a meter need three meters of it because it's more than two and a half so we're talking $120 for the backing fabric we're talking the batting I can get 2.4 wide still not going to be wide enough so I'll get three meters of that and I'll get a meter and a half of the narrow width like a meter cut it down the middle and add it and the shop also sells this I think it's like an iron-on tape that joins your your batting so I will get that and that's what I was going to use my birthday money from my mum and this education payment but I can't now because it's going to cost me two hundred dollars to have the cap put down which my friend is lending me the money for so that's basically the education payment gone rather than fabric it's going on paying back for the vet because it's two hundred dollars I've already confirmed that with the vets and with my license and car registration that's the money from my mum gone on that as well so no money for fabric I'll have to save up and it'll take time I'm not too worried because it's coming into winter well not winter till June but by the time I finish this it's going to be too cold to go and sit and sew in the other room for hours on end I do have an electric heater but you know I'd rather not chew through the electricity I'll probably just spend the winter knitting here in this room that's got the split system which I've turned off at the moment I did have it on before and do the um, you know do some knitting I'll get the binding made which I'll do a video on obviously there'll be more videos for these blocks and also showing you know the update like joining the two pieces together because I've done rows one to five are completed three blocks left for row six row seven has only has the first two and the last two done which is the cliff so there's nine to do there so after this one that gives me the 11 that needs to be done rows eight nine and ten are totally finished I finish row eight that's the one with the shark this shark hopefully won't be wonky I'll have to make sure it all lines up but I don't plan on doing much quilting over winter I've got quilt number two that I can carry on with for the next year without even touching the the actual quilting process for this one but I'm not going to because I'm not sure about my eyesight I also think I possibly need a break from hexagons even though I've got thousands and thousands sitting in there covered that can be used as far as sewing these with this you know bottom line thread and the fine needle I'm not having a problem threading the needle and doing that but what I have found is if I hold this up to the light not this one particularly but other blocks where I would normally do I don't know 10 15 stitches per side of the hexagon there's some gaps and it's not going to be a problem because when it's down on top of the batting and the backing fabric there's going to be no light coming through you're not going to see that all the all the um, seams aren't perfectly stitched but it's not as good as I could do before my sight problem but at least I've been able to do it so that 
is probably here comes the cat and she'll start crying in a second she's just jumped off the bed I heard her she also when she jumps down from things tends to stumble um, I said she's not she's not doing well it's gonna break my heart having a taking it to the vet when she's actually so mobile and you know eating and going to the litter fine but she does still have a certain quality of life but it's not here she comes it's not what it's it's not a good quality of life you know she's got um here she comes see if i can get her up on a chair and you can see her but she's got a chair next to me here that she spends 95 percent of her time on She's got a little scratching post that she uses for steps to get up to it. Now I'm not going to pick her up because that makes her cry. She stopped grooming herself as well, not that that's an issue. But, you know, it's those little things that you sort of think, yeah, it's, it's time. You know, sad as it is. And as I said, the desire to delay it, I think, is more for my benefit than hers. Yeah, she's um, just sitting there, she'll purr, she won't come for cuddles in bed, she'll come and lie near me, or maybe on my, you know, against my arm, but she won't, she doesn't want to be touched, so, you know, not unless it's just round her head, she doesn't want the rest of her body touched, you know, she's really sunken in at her, at her hips. Yeah, there's just no weight to her. There's just nothing except this huge lump on her side, and yeah, that's I'm, yeah, that's all I can say. Obviously, it's it's going to be heartbreaking, and she'll be buried down at my friend's place with all the others and the dogs. So yeah, that's for my friend's benefit, not for mine. I'm a leave them at the vets type of person, but my friend's insisted and. She's the last one of the six. One did disappear, so that left four. The other four are buried there. The two golden retrievers are buried there. So she'll go down with them um, and get buried down with them. So, as I said, that's for my friend's benefit, not mine. But, um, but we shall, you know, do that on Tuesday. My friend's coming tomorrow morning so she can hear what the specialist says. I'll put my phone on speaker. Hear what the specialist says about my MRI, which I'm hoping is going to say that nothing's showing up. Can't do anything about the condition, just live with it. Which is a hell of a lot better than being told, oh, there's a, something in your brain that's got to be sorted. So she'll be here tomorrow morning to hear that call. You have a cuppa and I've got some cake. Um, I'll see what she says about the cat. She says it's down to me, but I'll just see what she says. She's not one for letting animals drag on past their time, but, you know, she can at least say good goodbye to her before we go to the bed on Tuesday. But, um, but that's about it. But thank you for watching and, you know, st sticking at it so far in this, this video. Um, don't know if there'll be another one this week or, or next week or the week after. There'll be one at worst early May. I've got, like I said, I've got assignments to do. I've got a cat that won't shut up. But, um, yeah, we'll just see how it goes. Thank you again. Please like and subscribe and share and... You know, the more people that watch these videos, the more chances I've got of making some money from them. More subscribers. My subscribers' numbers are going up, you know, so slowly it's almost negligible. But they are going up. I'm never going to reach 100,000 subscribers. I'll be pushing it to reach 2,000 in the next probably probably still take another month or two to reach 2,000. But it's better than nothing. I do make a little bit of money from it. And obviously from the Patreon supporters as well. Thank you very much. Um, but for now, financially, just saving up for the fabric. That'll take a bit of time. And um, be nice if the cat shut up. But 
you know, I'll be getting that from Tuesday. Have a good clean up of the house and, you know, a pet hair free house for the first time in, well, the first time in probably 35 years, 33 years, that I won't have had a, a pet. So that'll be a change makes a change to my shopping it'll make you know I'd spend probably a third of my total grocery money is on cat food and kitty litter or probably more than a third but um, you know that'll ease my financial well, I won't say dire straits but you know financial situation considerably but you know everyone's in the same boat these days with the cost of living but um, that's pretty much it. I will carry on with this block and I will see you on the next video and thank you very much for watching and for your continued support. Thank you.